Summary of Speak by Lori House Anderson Melinda Sordino struggles with depression and feelings of isolation as she enters her first year at Meriwether High School. Students harass and isolate her all day long. Rachel, who used to be her best friend, is especially mean. Heather, an annoying new girl in town who is only interested in making friends, is the only person who will talk to her. Melinda makes fun of everything about Meriwether because she is cynical and smart. She only gets excited in art class, where Mr. Freeman, a passionate teacher, tells them that they will each focus on one subject for the whole year. Melinda's subject is trees. Melinda talks about her busy mother and uninterested father. She talks about how much she hates her babyish bedroom, which was designed when she was in fifth grade. Melinda hides her mirror in her bedroom because she hates how she looks, especially her raw, bit lips. Melinda has a cold conversation with Rachel over the next few weeks. She also spends time with Heather, works on her tree, and starts hiding in an old, empty janitor's closet at school. She used to be driven and happy, but now she feels distant and sad. When students at a pep rally pick on her because they know her as the one who called the police at Kyle Rogers' party, her sadness gets worse. Heather gets mad at Melinda for not being a good friend, but she quickly says she's sorry. Melinda's parents are also upset about her bad grades and lack of interest in school. They tell her off, but then they start yelling at each other. Melinda meets her smart lab partner, David Petrakis, in biology class. She still doesn't pay attention in class and spends Halloween by herself, thinking about the good times she had with friends. Heather joins the Marthas, a group of preppy girls who work together to help others. Melinda helps Heather with Martha's tasks, but the other girls make fun of her lips, which makes her cry in the bathroom. It gets even worse when Melinda sees a male student in the hallway and calls IT. She stops moving and calls him my nightmare. Melinda cleans her room and puts a Maya Angelou picture over the mirror. She says it's getting harder to talk and is thankful for her room because it lets her hide how she feels. David Petrakis starts to protest for his right to free speech in her social studies class after Mr. Neck, the teacher who picks on her, goes on a racist rant. Her mother tries to cook a turkey for Thanksgiving but fails because she forgot to defrost it. Even her dad can't cook the bird, and after a fight, the family eats pizza. Melinda makes a craft out of the turkey bones the next day. Mr. Freeman and Ivy, Melinda's old creative friend, both like the piece. As the school day goes on, David continues to protest in social studies, and an apple dissection happens in biology. This makes Melinda remember a time when she was a kid and she was in an apple farm. For Melinda, winter break makes her miss her youth. Melinda's folks give her a sketch pad and charcoals for Christmas because they've seen how much she likes to draw. She feels moved and almost tells them her secret, but she can't. She has to work at both her mom's and dad's jobs during the next few days of winter break. Melinda is having trouble with her tree as school starts. She helps Heather with a Martha poster project and passes out during biology class while dissecting a frog after recognizing the dead frog. Heather, who has been hired as a model, asks Melinda to hang posters. As she does this, she runs into IT, who says fresh meat in her ear while she stands still. People who know Melinda well yell at her when they hear that she has bad grades. Melinda won't say anything so she locks herself in her closet and scratches her wrist with a paper clip all night. When a senior in IT called Andy Evans starts to flirt with one of the Marthas while bothering Melinda, things get even worse. Melinda keeps getting bad grades and her tree doesn't get any better. One day she missed her school bus, so she walked to school and saw Andy, who was after her again. She stays frozen and then runs away from him. She skips school that day and spends it in the warm, sunny mall. School keeps going. In English class, Melinda talks about the symbols in the scarlet letter, and she tries to get her tree done. After Heather tells her she needs professional help, she stops being friends with her and becomes very sad. On February 14th, Melinda gets a Valentine's Day card that she both hopes and fears is from David Petrakis. 
Heather sent Melinda a Valentine's Day card to break up with her, which makes her cry in her closet. She doesn't go to school and hides in a hospital. Melinda's parents have a bad meeting with her director, whom she calls director principal and her guidance counselor because they are mad at her for getting bad grades. She doesn't say anything while the adults fight, so she has to go to in-school punishment. Andy Evans is there and blows her ear. She dreams about putting him down. On the bright side, Melinda finds inspiration in Pablo Picasso's broken art in art class. When she needs a ride to meet her mother one day, Mr. Freeman gives her one and tells her to use her tree to show how she feels. She also studies for a biology test about seeds, even though not having any friends is making her feel worse. Melinda wakes up in the middle of a basketball game because she slept too long in her janitor's closet. David Petrakis asks her to come over to his house for pizza after the party, but she feels scared and says no. After having trouble sleeping, Melinda goes up to her roof and has a flashback to the night of Kyle Rogers' party. She remembers sneaking in with her friends, drinking three beers to calm down, getting lost in the trees, and Andy asking her to dance. She remembers him kissing her and getting meaner. As her memories get jumbled, she remembers how he jumped on top of her and she tried to say no until he put his hands over her mouth. She talks barely comprehensible about how he raped her and how she tried to call 911 but couldn't make a sound. She finds that she bit through her own lip when she comes back to the present. As winter turns into spring, Melinda has a good time with Ivy but learns that Rachel and Andy are dating. She writes Rachel a scribbled note of warning because she is scared. She does an extra credit paper on the suffragettes for extra credit in social studies. She gets really excited about the subject until Mr. Neck tells her she has to read it out loud in front of the class. David and she come up with a plan. Melinda fights for her right to be quiet, but David thinks she should fight for her right to talk. While Melinda is working in the art room, Andy comes in to find Rachel. Melinda can't speak to him when he gets close. During the meeting, Ivy walks in and tells Andy some bad news. The next morning, Melinda wakes up with a fever and dreams that she is on Oprah talking about being raped. Finally, May comes around and Melinda starts planting. Andy Evans is marked on the bathroom wall as a guy to stay away from by her and Ivy. Melinda gets stronger. And when Heather comes to ask for help making prom decorations, she turns her down. After feeling strong, Melinda chooses to talk to Rachel. The conversation goes well until Melinda tells Rachel that she was raped at the beginning of the year. At first, Rachel is scared and terrified, but when Melinda tells her that Andy did it, Rachel is shocked and mean. Even though Melinda is very upset, she feels better when Ivy shows her that many other girls have added more warnings about Andy to the wall. After seeing tree trimmers work on a tree in her yard, Melinda goes to the place where she was raped. In the quiet woods, she promises to take care of her old self like a seed so that she can grow again soon. After a night with her parents where they don't fight, she learns that Rachel broke up with Andy at prom. Melinda is so happy that she thinks she doesn't need to spend any more time in her room. Andy Evans comes in after Melinda when she goes to clean out her closet. He tells her she's lying about being raped and calls her ugly and jealous. He then tells her he will give her what she wants and tries to rape her again. Melinda screams no as he starts to take his pants off. She breaks the closet's secret mirror with her turkey sculpture and puts a broken piece to his neck making him speechless and scared. The girls' lacrosse team breaks down the closet door as she does this. Now that school is almost over, Melinda, who is going to summer school, is all of a sudden famous after the attack. She finally makes a beautiful but flawed tree while sitting in the art room. As she does this, she tells herself that she was raped and that she will get through it. After putting birds on her tree, she starts to cry. As she does this, Mr. Freeman walks over and says, she's been through a lot. As Melinda says let me tell you all about it, she has a feeling that the ice in her throat is melting. About the author. Lori House was born on October 23, 1961. 
She used to be a journalist, but she started writing children's books before switching to writing books for teens and young adults with Speak in 1999. Since then, she has written a lot of best-selling books and won a lot of literary awards. Anderson has gone to high schools all over the country to talk about the problems the book brings up. She has also spoken out against things like book bans and for more gender equality in young adult fiction. Anderson is a strong feminist, and she has said that the story of Speak was based on a stressful and violent event she had as a ninth grader. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.